This is a Camtex D1850 garden tractor which is in desperate need of repair. In this series we're going to be fully stripping it down, rebuilding it, repainting it and generally making it look better than it did when it came out the factory in 2003. It's got a really bad dashboard, the wiring is all melted, it's even been cut and chopped all over the place. It has no headlights including bulbs. It's generally in really bad condition. Someone's tried to paint it and they've put runs all over it. It's full of spiders and it's even got its fair share of oil leaks. But I do know where this is stemming from and it's because it is missing its stop solenoid. This small tractor is fitted with a two cylinder Yanmar diesel, 2V78 and it's got more than enough power to power the 50 inch deck which is provided with this particular model. Believe it or not, it does run and drive. When this was new, it was the most luxurious model out there. You could higher and lower the deck with the touch of a button, along with the powered grass collector. This all worked through a series of electric actuators. Believe it or not, they all work on this tractor, including the rear hitch, and everything works as it should do, despite the electrics being abysmal. It's a good job as well, because these electric actuators new are over hundred pounds each. While we're around the back of the tractor, you can see there's a few chunks being taken out by an angle grinder. Clearly this isn't correct, so we're gonna have to find a way of fixing this. Someone has also done some really bad welding and have actually welded through. Not only this, but someone has been let loose with a red can of aerosol paint and they've sprayed everything. So you may be wondering what I actually paid for the tractor. It was on an internet auction site with a starting bid of £500. It sold for £920, but not to me. I sent the seller a message saying if you have any trouble with the person who's bought it then I'll still be happy to give you an offer. They got back in contact with me a week later and I said I'll take it for £600. They then got back to me again and said they won't take anything less than £800. I replied and said that I'll have to come and have a look at it before I agree to that kind of money. Once I got there, we agreed on £790 and it's now mine. So that's what it's cost, but it's going to cost quite a lot more to restore it. But it's a project and it's going to be good. So sit back and relax. I'll do all the hard work. You may even learn something along the way. So here it is in the workshop. And in this light, it really does show the extent of some of the wear and damage on this machine. I'm gonna to have to spend quite a bit on replacement parts. You can see the dashboard alone is uh, fairly poor. I have actually managed to source a new one and for some reason this old one has melted around the throttle. The bonnet also needs to be replaced so I'm going to remove that first. That will also give me better access to the engine. And the first thing on the to-do list is to remove the battery for safety reasons. I'm now removing the bonnet. It's just two 13 bolts, that's M8. And there would originally be a cable which goes to the headlights but that has long gone. The bonnet then just lifts off. It's a little tricky getting it past the muffler though, but it does come off eventually. Now the bonnet's off, you can really see the extent of the fading on it. It's almost gone pink, and it also is just generally in not very good condition. So I'm hoping to source a new one of these. It may have to be a used one, but I'm sure anything is better than this one. This now gives us perfect access to the front of the engine, and you can see a little hole there, which is where the stop solenoid should go. If you're not sure what a stop solenoid is, basically when you turn the key, it's a little mechanism and it pushes a little rod out and it pushes against that little lever in there and that will in turn stop the fuel, which of course then turns the engine off. So here we go, here's the top of the engine and you can see it's got the radiator on there and also plenty of guards, top of the air filter as well. All this is going to have to be removed. You can also see the fuel tank there which also will have to come out so I can actually gain access to the wiring which is not very good. I'm hoping to also pick up another used wiring loom. So now I can really start to strip it down. There's this ghastly black anti-slip material which needs to come off. This is adhesive and it should just pull off with a bit of effort. But first I need to remove the foot guards which means I also have to remove the reverse pedal first of all and then there are plenty of bolts underneath holding it on. So to remove the reverse pedal, basically underneath here, there is one bolt and it then sits on like a rectangular piece of metal and that keeps it in place. The bolt then just comes out. 
that should just unscrew. Fairly long bolt. And then the reverse pedal just pulls off. Then you just have to work it through the hole and then that will allow us to remove our right hand side foot plate. So here's the first of the bolts which hold the actual foot plate on. Very simple, just a nylock nut with a bolt and just remove those. So that's all the bolts removed, we can then pull it off and put it somewhere for safekeeping. You can then see the forward and backward mechanism for the pedals. Very simple, it looks a bit more complicated than it is. And we have now got access to the ghastly material which needs to be pulled off as soon as possible. It goes all the way along. Someone's obviously stripped it down before to actually install it on there. Now we've got both sides off, you can see the actuator for the deck there. I'm hoping to actually be able to clean it up later. And this is also held on by a couple of bolts. I'm going to remove it so I can respray it properly. There is also like a little bar on here. This will also have to be removed. The bar is for tensioning the deck belt, but we'll come onto that later when we move onto the deck. Now onto the dashboard. We need to move the steering wheel out of the way so we can actually remove the dashboard itself. To do this, I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver to move the cover and then the bolt which holds the steering wheel on can simply be removed. Once that's off there are a few washes in there which need to be kept safe and then the steering wheel should just pull straight off the shaft. That's it off. Now there's a cup underneath here which needs to be removed. To remove this cup you need to use a posi drive screwdriver there's two self-tapping screws in there. Once they're removed, it should be able to just pull off. Now for the dashboard itself. It's not as complicated as it looks, but I do need to remove all of the different switches from this dashboard. The throttle will also have to be removed as well. To make this job simpler, I will just remove the fuel return pipe, which comes back from the injectors into the fuel tank. This will just give me a little bit more space when working around the dashboard. This is just a Jubilee clip, slacken it off, and then prise the old pipe off there. I'm gonna replace this at a later date. So as you can see, the dashboard is full of all kinds of different switches for the sweeper, the deck, and the headlights, and all kinds of things. And these will need to be removed very carefully without damaging the sticker or the switch. Once they're removed, I can remove them from the socket and then they need to be clearly labelled with what they are, what each function is of each switch. This is the PTO, this is what engages the deck. And everything needs to be labelled and stored correctly where it's not going to get lost. Now this is the tricky part, I need to preserve the stickers or decals because I couldn't find any more. So I need to gently slide this screwdriver underneath and remove it. This applies for all of them. Now for the PCB, this is basically just the brain of the whole circuit. That needs to be removed carefully. And you can see now every switch is out. There's just two rivets on the back and one on the front holding this on. You need to drill those out and then the whole top plastic cover should be able to be removed from the rest of the mower. In case you're wondering, it's an HSS drill bit I'm using. That's all three rivets out, and then that just pulls off. It's a bit of a mess under here, but it needs to be done. And at the end of all of this, everything should look amazing. So there's everything in there, all labeled, and just pushed to the side out of the way. Now because someone's already taken this mower apart before and then put it back together again, someone's already removed these knee guards and once you've removed them, they tend to wrinkle up and uh, really just not be very good when you put them back on again. So I'm pulling these off and I've bought some new ones to put on there. Right, finally the moment I've been waiting for, I'm going to remove this horrible anti-slip material. I'm going to use a screwdriver and a scraper and it'll be a bit time consuming but eventually I should be able to pull it all off and see the end of it.
That's all done, now there's just one big panel left to be removed, I've undone all the bolts and that can now be pulled off. This reveals everything inside and it should make it a lot easier when coming to clean it all up and repaint it. At this point I should probably show you the horrible welds. Someone actually had welded that panel on which I've had to remove by cutting it, but these are just unbelievably bad. So I think the only solution I've got here is to actually cut them either off or grind them down. And I don't know what that's supposed to be. Removing that rear panel also now unveils what it's really like under here and you can see someone really has gone mad with that red paint. So everything's going to have to be paint stripped and generally tidied up. But first I want to smooth off those welds with a flappy disc on the grinder. Certainly better than it was, I couldn't really tidy up the bad welds very well, but it is better than it was, so that is a good job done. Well it's now time to do the paint stripping, sorry if the quality of the sound is different, it's because I'm not recording through my inside microphone, this is just through the camcorder. Uh, but yeah, we're doing the paint stripping and you can see it's actually coming along really well. Now you can get different grades of paint strippers, some really cheap and nasty ones which don't really do anything. There's others which can strip it right off. I think this is a bit of a medium one really. It's pretty good, but uh, it doesn't strip it right off, but you can see it's doing a fairly decent job. This is just a sort of over-the-counter kind of product, not anything you need a special license for or anything. So yeah, I'm just going to continue and it seems to be doing really well. And hopefully we'll have it all off in no time. I've managed to buy on top a new bonnet and some new side guards so it should look amazing when this is done when I get to the back section here though I am going to have to remove this actuator in here and then remove the PTO pulley because that needs cleaning up and repainting anyway probably a black colour or maybe a silver colour I'm not quite sure yet but obviously not that red and this should be silver as well so quite a bit of tidying up required I think but on the whole, it seems to be going okay, so I'm going to continue and I will come back when I've done a bit more work. I'm working on the centre console now and you can see, I've got a nice sharp chisel here. Just gets underneath that first layer, because obviously someone's already painted this really badly and they've done it over the top of the first layer of paint, which Countax would have put on originally. Um, so th this paint strip is getting through the first layer very well and it's actually getting to a bit of bare metal just in a few areas, right here. Uh, so I think two layers of this stuff and it should take all the paint off. Obviously where the matting was, it took it all off anyway, so that saved me quite a bit of work. Still, we have a lot to do. You can see where I've done down here. I've just done the sides there. Obviously it needs a, a good tidy up and sand down as well. This top bit here needs to be done again. But yeah, you get the general idea. It's much better than some of the paint strippers I've used before. Uh, but yeah, not amazing, but still pretty good. Definitely uh, speeds my day up. Wouldn't want to be sat around here with that heat gun, trying to get all that paint off. So yeah, this is working very well. I'm quite happy with it. I'm not going to be removing the engine though. Um, I think it'd be too much of a hassle. I'm trying to go and work around it. And I will have to remove the, uh, the, the guard which goes around the radiator and the engine and stuff. So there is a bit of work to do but I'm not stripping it down as far as I thought I would be doing which in a way is good because it's going to make the whole process a lot quicker and I don't think it will actually make it any better in the end um, so yeah I think it's fine not removing it and no this is not the start of a spaghetti bolognese this is the wiring loom which I've bought for it it's not a new one this is a used one but it's in much better condition than the ones in it currently so I think this is a wise idea installing this one when everything is out Obviously it will be a little bit difficult with the engine in but I should still be able to squeeze around it and fit all the wires where they need to be because this is, as far as I'm aware, I bought it from another D1850 and this one is complete without any chopping about with it uh, whereas my one has been chopped in a number of places actually 
and they've rewired it badly and all kinds of stuff so I think it is just easier and safer just to put another used but complete wiring loom in. Right, back to the better quality microphone. Um, you can see I've been working for quite a long time, about five hours I've been working so far today and I've taken a lot of the paint off. This can then be sanded down to make it a nicer finish ready for the priming but you can see it's looking quite good. This is the sander I'm going to use, it's just a palm sander by Bosch, very nice sander as well and uh, you can see I've been doing it here on the center console it just smooths it off and gets rid of any leftover paint before I prime it so definitely worth doing Once the sanding is complete, it's essential I get the primer on, otherwise the metal can start to rust. This particular primer is designed for cars, so it's obviously a high quality primer. I'm hoping it's going to last a long time and protect that metal. So there we go, that is the main body of the machine actually primed now, and it is touch dry, um, but obviously I'm going to leave it overnight to dry properly, uh, but the top comb won't be going on tomorrow anyway, so it's fine. It's actually taken me a day to take all the paint off and respray that. The respraying part was actually really quick. Most of uh, a repaint is preparation. There isn't really much time put into the actual repaint because when you're spraying it's really fast it's more the preparing like sanding down paint stripping that's what takes all the time I started about 10 o'clock this morning and it's now six ish so I've had a few breaks in between but yeah it's taken quite a long time but I'm quite happy with the the results so far but obviously there is still a lot of work left to do I've not done in here yet because I wanted to take the PTO pulley off and clean it up separately so there's still lots of work to do before the top coat goes on. But I think for a day's work, um, I'm happy with that. There is certainly nothing fast or cheap about restoring, well anything really. Restoring is expensive. But uh, yeah, not, not a massively um, expensive machine to restore really compared to like classic cars or something. But uh, it's still going to be a few hundred at least. So um, yeah. It's, it, I'm quite happy with the results so far. Definitely not um, completely professional. I'm not a professional restorer. It's just I am uh, someone who is very interested in these and wants to, you know, get them back to life again. Because this one would probably have been scrapped in a not too distant future if I hadn't bought it. And uh, I'm going to revive it, bring it back to life, and hopefully it'll be good for another. Well, if I keep it, it'll be good for rest of my lifetime if I'm maintaining it because I love these things and I will always care about them so yeah that is today's work done well it's a new day let's start a very tedious job of paint stripping all of the paint off the other panels for the diesel Countax I've got the paint stripper on now and you can see it's working quite well I tend to find that if the person before me has already stripped the original paint off it tends to bubble quite easily but where they've painted over the original paint without stripping it off first it does make it a lot harder and takes multiple layers of paint stripper to actually remove it. So here's a nice little thing, a little time lapse of the paint stripping. This is over a course of about 10 minutes. All done. Should just be able to get my scraper, get underneath all of that and just take all of it off. I love it when it goes easily. <laughs> when you get to a point where it doesn't come off, it gets much harder. You can actually see a few bits of pitting underneath. They've painted over some 
obviously some where well, there used to be some rust and uh, that will have to be filled in at a later date so to stop the video from being boring I've actually skipped a few days everything is prepared and ready to paint now I'm not going to be able to film much of the paint spraying because it, it takes a lot of concentration for me because I'm not very good at it and having the camera in the way um, it's just going to make me have runs and stuff on the paint so unfortunately this is the only bit that I actually filmed of the paint spraying but it gives you a general idea of uh, how it's working this is actually Massey Ferguson Super Red if you're interested in that well another few days later and we have got quite a good result actually it's come out really well I did have a few runs but I've sanded them down, resprayed it, and it's actually come out really well. Now the camera doesn't really give a true, it doesn't really show the true color. It, it looks more pink in, in the camera, but it's actually more red. If you've seen the Massey Ferguson Vintage Tractor, it's the same color as that, and you can see the finish is actually pretty good. There was quite a bit of pitting underneath though, which is visible, but only in the light. I've also gone to the effort of painting the muffler. This is in a heat proof silver paint should make it look a lot better and you can also see that I've left the original foot pad on there I have to take that off and put some new adhesive grit paper on there but overall I think it's come out quite well and in the next episode we will be rebuilding this and hopefully giving it a drive seeing if it cuts and then that should be the project finished so if you've enjoyed this first episode then please do subscribe if you're already subscribed then please stay tuned and until next time bye for now